Hey everyone, it's Lisa and I'm back again today to do a part two. It's going to be two of probably many different weight loss type videos and just I kind of just want to chronicle and share with you like what I'm doing with my life. You know what I mean? And this is just a big part of it. So, okay, Chanel, you can't, there's not enough room. There's no room, Chanel. Oh my goodness, I had so many like great responses and great questions and personal messages and I'm sorry if I did not get to you and I wrote down some things so that I can try to answer everyone because this is just, I mean, it's monumental in my life. It's making a difference in every single aspect of my life. Not only the weight loss, but just feeling better and i had some people say well you told us your life story but what are you doing to lose weight well how i was feeling is so important because this is not just like a oh i want to be skinny or you know like a fad diet it's something that i had really had no choice i mean i tried every way around look at her she is determined she is getting up here and you know you're going to have to get down she just has to walk around to the same place that she was. And I feel like if I didn't have that factor of never feeling good and just major weight gain and not just, not just weight gain, I could hide it. You know what I mean? It's not just weight gain that bothered me the way I looked. It bothered me the way I felt and I lived my life and my mental my mental ability to think you know and just so many different things so i want to stress that 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 is why i'm doing this another thing i want to stress is my age i know i did that last time but i feel like you have to keep that in mind you have to keep in mind that my body is not working like it used to it is not burning fat like it used to and it's not burning fat like a 20 30 40 year old i mean even when i was 45 i was totally different this really has to do with menopause and I, I really i don't even like that word but it's just you know it's a fact of life this is what i want you to keep in mind also is that we're all so different we all have to find what works for us if you don't like cheese or you don't like meat or you don't like spinach then find something else that works for you. But the principles are the same, that this is going to be a drastic change for you. It's not going to be cutting down. If you're in my situation where you have just fat, just that you cannot get rid of. And I'll kind of start there. Of course, I've got pages and pages of notes I've been writing down. I, I write something down to tell you every day. I had already gone over with you that I don't cheat anymore. I don't have a cheat day. I mean, because I just don't want to. Like, right now, if someone told me I had to stop eating the way I'm eating and go back to eating, you know, junk on the weekends or something, I mean, I would cry because... I like this so much and I feel like my life has changed so much and I'm just so much happier and getting so much more stuff done and everything so it's just it's more than just doing this to lose weight okay first of all I'm going to give you lots of subjects for you to look up and for you to read about because I feel like when you learn something for yourself it's just different. We all learn different. We all take in information different. You might not trust what I'm saying. You might not trust what a doctor is saying. You might need to hear it from, that's how I am. I need to hear something from about, I would say three to four different people and, you know, kind of decide what is true. Like if, if there's some facts that they're all saying, you know, then I might you know take it or whatever but I certainly and please don't I see so many videos and I don't want to put anybody down but don't fall prey to the do these stomach exercises to lose menopause belly fat you will be sitting your butt up just sitting up sit up sit up planking 
doing whatever. I mean, you can do it till you cry and it is not going to work because that fat is different for us. And another thing I want you to read about is oxalates. And this is, this was very, very, very profound for me. And I cannot find which one of you told me it was a simple comment that you left me and you said, Lisa, you need to check out Dr. So-and-so. I think it was Dr. Saladino that was talking about oxalates. And so oxalates are in most leafy vegetables, plants, and they can wreak havoc on some people, on your joints, your, the inflammation. And when I, that is what really, I can't thank you enough, the person who sent that to me, because that is when I really, really started in on reading so much and like watching so many doctors. And I remember the whole two weeks that we stayed down at the beach, that's all I did every night when I was in bed was read and watch these doctors on YouTube and read some more. And so I really, that was so inspiring. And it really made me feel better thinking that maybe that's why, you know, all these salads and stuff, maybe that's one of the reasons that I can't eat, you know, the leafy green vegetables that I crave. You guys, I want to eat stuff like that so bad. I don't want to um, like sit here and like tell you like pretend I know so much and pretend I'm some kind of doctor or nutritionist or anything like that so what I want to do is just give you some things to look up read about and I will link some stuff down below and then you can kind of go along with me so please read about oxalates it is very interesting and there is a lot of just testimony I mean, Michaela, I can't remember her name now, Peterson, she was someone who had major, ma she had hip replacements like at 12, had major, major hip and joint problems until she quit eating oxalates. That like, you know, shook me. And I was like, oh my gosh, because you know what has oxalates? Nuts. And I was eating those big yummy things of nuts like the ones from Costco we have one in our pantry now that is just sitting there I need to take it to someone every morning it was nothing for me to get a handful of nuts I mean as many I would pour as many as I could pour in my palm and I would just go sit outside usually the cats would come out with me or go sit in the back and I would eat those nuts and that would be kind of like my breakfast so I have cut out nuts. I do not eat nuts at all. That could be a big thing that is helping me with my joint pain. My mom and dad, everything that I read or see that's good, I either send to John or my parents, depending on, John doesn't have a lot of joint pain, but he has a lot of just like a pain right here that he can't figure out or something like that. So I'll send him those videos. Or, you know, my parents, my dad has a lot of joint pain like I do. So he, they cut out the nuts and they feel so much better. Sally Norton is another one. She is a, all these people, I can't remember if they're doctors or nutritionists, but Sally Norton, I started, you know, reading and watching a lot of her. I don't know if she even has any videos like all by herself, but she is, a lot of people have conferences with her. And so I've written down no nuts. Um, I've written down importance of age, meaning some of this might not apply to you if you're 30 something. So just keep in mind, you know, that I'm dealing with different issues. So when I went into the oxalates, that will lead you into the carnivore diet. And that just sounds terrible, doesn't it? I mean, it just sounds terrible. And one of you already, a long time ago, when I first admitted to you guys that I had IBS and I was dealing with a lot of that and it was really it was affecting every part of my life one of you mentioned to me that you had the same problem and that all you could eat was meat and so I had that in the back of my mind and I, that just sounded crazy to me then I had a right around the beginning of the 
quarantine, I had a virtual doctor's appointment with my doctor. And I mentioned to him that I just might have to just start, you know, eating meat. And he said, well, one thing you could do is you could start, you could go to all meat and then you could add in one vegetable at a time. And I'm not talking like one one day, one the next, another one the next day. You have to do it one vegetable at a time and give it a week to see how your body reacts. So then I went and I watched a lot of videos on the carnivore diet. And a lot of people have a lot of success, relief, weight loss, and just have a really good outcome on the carnivore diet. Now, if you don't eat meat and meat grosses you out, then of course you're gonna to have to try something else. I know a lot of people just don't like meat and so this is not gonna be you know, something that you can do, but I am going to share with you exactly what I'm doing. So I started out right in the beginning. I think the first couple of days I was just eating meat and cheese, like doing my ham and cheese roll-ups and stuff like that that I used to do, eating uh, a lot of like grilled chicken. And, you know, I started out that way. And then the more I read about carnivore diet, the more I got strict with it. Then after, I probably did that for, I don't know, probably a good two or three weeks, maybe even a month. Insulin. Okay, I cannot stress enough how much you need to read about insulin and what insulin does, especially in a peri whatever menopausal body and people that are just insulin resistant, like people that you see that are very, very overweight. And I am very guilty of thinking, like seeing someone who is just sad, overweight, and you think, how much are they eating to even sustain that? Well, the thing is, their insulin and their hormones are all out of whack, and their body is not processing things the right way. It's just not working right, and they're going to have to do something drastic to get that back in order. Well, when you're in menopause, you might not feel like you're in that position, but we kind of are. It's just, it's all about the hormones. It's all about the hormones with us. So when you are gaining that weight around the middle, and then what would get me is I wouldn't feel flabby. You know what I mean? It was just like I was getting wider, but I didn't have a lot of like fat like around my middle. Like if you were to just look at me naked it didn't look that bad but if i turned to the side i just looked like i was like a teletubby i mean i was just so round well what a lot of that is is the fat that is inside the visceral fat and that fat is not good for us we always have a little bit of fat in between our organs but this fat is like inside and it's making us bigger feel terrible. That's probably why I didn't, couldn't hardly bend that way or that way. And it's, I always felt like I couldn't even suck in my stomach anymore. It's like, what is going on? I can't even suck it in. Well, a lot of that was because when I eat vegetables, okay, it's like so much with me. When I eat vegetables, I have that reaction. And the, the gastroenterologist told me this, when you think of bloating, you think of air but when someone like me bloats it's fluid my body sends fluid to my intestines and whatever down there my gut to you know try it like it's fighting that lettuce and that um oh god what's something i really can't eat romaine lettuce and anything like that um what's something even like peaches and stuff like that, my body just has a fit with, and it's sending fluid there. So your, you know, intestines and everything, your digestive system fills up with fluid. So I was dealing with that too. So once I got a hold of not eating the vegetables, all of that went away, and it feels so good, you guys. I can't even, I can't even tell you. Then when you really start losing fat, not 
fluid, not, you know, with the Atkins diet, you know how you lose eight pounds and you think it's like you're fat or a weight and it's not, it's just fluid. Well, I think the first week I did lose, you know, I lost that. You know, in that first week, you'll lose that extra fluid that's in your body. But from then on, if you're doing things right and you are gearing your food, your carbs, your sugar, and everything towards keeping your insulin low, you are going to be burning fat. And that puts you in ketosis. So I am doing carnivore slash ketogenic diet. I would just be doing straight ketogenic, but I am having to filter in vegetables one at a time. So like I will try green beans and I'll eat a little bit, like maybe five green beans. And then I'll give it a day, you know, like probably three or four days to see how that affected me. If that goes well, I might eat a whole serving of green beans. Then, however that goes, I'll wait to the next week. I usually do one a week. The next week, I'll try asparagus. And like further in my little series, I'll share with you like the best keto vegetables to try and all of that kind of stuff. But so the next one I tried was asparagus. Asparagus, I had three spears of asparagus that John fixed for me on the grill in tin foil with his olive oil and all that kind of stuff. Oh my goodness, you guys, that asparagus was so good. I could have eaten like 20 pieces of it. It did not agree with me. And I did not know it the next morning. I woke up, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be able to eat asparagus. And then that night, oh my goodness, you know, I think I even told my mom, guess what, the asparagus hasn't bothered me the next day. So a whole, like I ate it at night, the whole next day was fine. It got me the next morning and I felt bad for about three to four days. But I'm not giving up. Next time I'm going to eat just two pieces and see how that works or whatever. So each week I'm filtering in a new vegetable. If you would like to tell me, if you've been in this situation, you'd like to tell me some that you think would be good. I know sauerkraut. Um, sauerkraut is on my list and so that is something that I'm going to try very, very soon. Okay. Yogurt, I've written down yogurt, smoothies, bars, etc. No go after menopause. Okay. This is a big mistake I made years ago. Do you guys remember when I first discovered, um, that beautiful sweet girl, what is her name? It's um, her, her, her boyfriend's name is Moritz. Oh, and she's got the Jisoo hair oil. I'm drawing a blank, I'll think of it in a minute. Well, I discovered her and I just thought, oh, I just, she's so beautiful. She had, you know, um, what had like some weight issues when she was younger and she had toned down a lot. And so I got on a kick with her watching what she eats in a day. Oh, and it looked so good. She would make these little bowls that had this and this and bananas. And, you know, I think it would be like a scoop of the organic peanut butter. And it would be this, this. So I went through a stage where I tried to do that. Because I thought, you know, if I eat all things that God made, all whole foods, you know, um, sugars, but only natural sugars, you know, I should be able to lose some weight. Did not work. I mean, it's good, it's yummy, but it just doesn't work. When you are at this stage and you are, your hormones are out of whack and you are insulin resistant or you are just at the point where you are really needing to burn fat. And that is another thing. I don't even know if I really, yes, yes, I wrote, I wrote it down. It says how to really, and I put it capital with underlines, lose fat. I knew that I really wanted to zero in on losing fat. I could just see it on my body. And I know the first thing people say to me when they see me and I meet people in person is they say, you're so small. You're just so small. I know I look a lot bigger in on the camera, but I have a really small frame. And so 152 was a lot for me. And it was like hanging off of my body. Like my thighs 
it was just like cellulite and just like you could see the fat. I mean, I could see I needed to lose fat. So I really researched how to lose fat and how you lose fat is keeping your insulin low. And when you go in ketosis, you are going to be burning fat. That puts off ketones in your system. I got the ketone strips. That is another thing that really helps me. When you see that little strip, you pee on the strip and when it gets pink and then goes darker and you know you're in ketosis and you know scientifically for a fact you are burning fat, there is something so fabulous about that. And it's that's another way of not cheating because you don't want to get out of that ketosis because it'll take you like, you know, it took me just about two or three days to get in that state and I don't want to no you know amount of cookies or potato chips is worth that to me because it will take another couple of days and so seeing those little strips and then knowing what ketosis is and knowing that you're burning fat that is so wonderful just just having that in your mind is so wonderful you just really need to know the I wrote the chemical process this is something funny. I always wondered, where does it go? And I even remember asking a friend's mom, where does it go? I mean, like physically, like where does it go? And she says, well, you, you know, you pee and you poop it out. And so I've always thought that. I've always thought that, you know, and that's why a lot of times when I was going to the bathroom a lot, I thought, oh, well, good for me. Good for me. I must be losing weight. That's not the case. Losing weight is actually, I just um, was watching another video about that. Fat is burned in a hormone interaction during deep sleep. Actually, your fat cells, you know that we are born with X amount of fat cells. And those fat cells just shrink and get bigger. Shrink and get bigger. And something that really helped me, do you guys remember me telling you, I'm going to look good by next summer. That was at the beginning of this summer, and I think it was Dr. Berg, and he's my hero. I'll go ahead and tell you. Dr. Berg, I've watched so many of his videos, and even if you do not like keto, you don't believe in it, you can't do it, you don't want to do it, you will still enjoy a lot of his videos. But I watched a video on, I think it was cellulite, how to get rid of it. And he explained just how the fat cell, it burns off in like a chemical process. And it is like, comes out of your body. It is um, emitted or whatever. I can't think of the word I want to use. But when you sleep, so, and it has to be a deep sleep. It can't be bad sleep. So here comes the you have to get good sleep. And I had heard that before, but, you know, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, there's so many myths out there. I cannot wait to go over some of those with you to losing weight, especially for women our age. That really, you know, sunk in, too, that I'm getting rid of that when I sleep. It's not just when I go to the bathroom. And so I got out of my head that I had to, you know, go to the bathroom or else I wasn't going to lose weight. And it really helped me sleep. But you know what happened? The better I ate, the better I, everything I've done so far helped me sleep better. All of a sudden, when you cut out sugar and you cut out processed foods and you cut out all junk food, even if it's a healthy junk food, your butt will be tired. I am sleepy at 9.30. It's all I can do to get through one episode of Dexter, and we're on the last season. We're on the last couple episodes. But when I get out that sleep and glow pillow that I love so much, and I, if I start off this way, and I lay my head on it, I mean, I'm out. John last night said, he said, you are so weird now. You're so different. He said, used to, you would sit there with your phone. I said, I know it's wonderful. It's because I couldn't go to sleep. I have zero issues with sleep. I go to bed, I fall asleep, I do not wake up to go to the bathroom, I do not toss and turn. I usually have my start this way, and then I go to my stomach, and then when I turn that next way, I'm just gone. I mean, I never think about it again. I'm not having to 
I had all these games I would play, going through the alphabet and naming stuff, you know, just to get my mind off of other things, kind of like counting sheep. And I just don't have to do that anymore. And I sleep. And so when I wake up, I usually wake up about 6.30, anywhere from 6.30 to 7.30, naturally. I wake up, bling! I, I feel good. Nothing in me wants to go roll over and go back to sleep. I cannot wait to get up and get on the scale. And I feel like I need to go through that whole thing too. Let me write it down. And it's just a happy day. I feel good. I feel like I look better. And in the beginning, you know, it's not going to be like this crazy weight loss because I know I wrote that down somewhere. Let me look. Here it is. I wrote, focus on losing fat one to two pounds a week. That is all the fat you can lose. So if you're losing more than one to two pounds, it's not fat. So having that in my head was really good too because I knew that's all to expect and I knew that was good. And so I'm at the one to two pounds a week. Probably what happens is like um, the other day I made the video, it was that Monday, I was 132. I think that was the first day I had gotten to 132. The next day I was had gone up to 133.4. Then yesterday I was at I was 132.4. Then Tuesday 133.0. Wednesday 132.2 and then today 132.8. So it'll do that. It'll um you know, let you get excited for a minute and then it'll usually pop back up and then pop back down, stay steady and then do it again. And I know that, so I'm not disappointed. And then I'm gonna list my scales down below. Just, I mean, I like them and I like, they've actually got an app that goes with it that I don't use. John used to use it and maybe I should, but it'll give you like your BMI, tell you different little things. I didn't find that that helpful. But get a scale as soon as you start. And even when I went to the beach, I took that scale with me. I did not want to miss a day of writing down how much I'd lost. And I wanted to do it at the same. This is very, very important. You need to weigh morning with no clothes on. And the reason you do that is that gives you a control, you know, a controlled situation. If you weigh all different kinds of times of day, then things fluctuate throughout the day. I mean, not even counting what you eat and drink, and your clothes are different. You know, whatever clothes you have on. So I, first thing I do is go to the bathroom, walk out, take everything off, lay it on John's sink, and weigh myself. Then I get, you know, then I go on with my day. So get a good scale and stick with it. Hey, you guys, I'm going to have to stop here because I don't want to, I can't make a video longer than 30 minutes. And I feel like I've already hit that, maybe even further. But I'm going to do a quick outfit of the day. This is what I've been doing every morning. I go to my closet and I look for things that I haven't been able to wear. Things that I haven't gotten rid of that I knew one day I was going to fit into. And a lot of that has been high-waisted flared pants. So that's what I have on today, so I'll be right back. So today I have on, this is actually a really old t-shirt. I don't know if they even sell them anymore, but I believe it's the Vince. It's either the Vince or the Monroe. I think it might be Monroe linen t-shirt. And I have on one of those lively lace bras. Because this t-shirt is so see-through, you want to wear something that's pretty underneath it. And then these pants, I cannot remember where I got them or what they are. Of course, I'll list them down below. And so here they are. So they're, oh, sorry. And I just have on my little Prada heels that I got at the resale shop because I needed something with that height and they're like a linen too and I think I've already gotten something on them looks like it's probably mascara or something but I'll just have to spot clean it when I'm going to clean it and I've been using my Chanel denim bag and I love this bag I really I would get another soft Chanel bag in a heartbeat this is the first one I've ever had and I love it it is very user-friendly 
This size is just perfection and I love it. For accessories, I have on these Dean Davidson little, I think it's from the Lagos collection. A necklace is, I don't know if you guys remember this one from Walmart. I quit wearing it for a while because it was out of stock and every time I wore it I got so many questions about it and it being out of stock but I wanted to wear it today so I looked it up and it's back in stock. This is actually gold so it will not turn and it does not get tangled because see how they're on little rings that keep them separate and I just think it's so dainty and pretty. I like wearing this when I'm wearing something that's like low cut. It would look so good with like wrap dresses or wrap tops. My Dean Davidson, I cannot even remember, is it Marcosite? I can't remember the name of this stone, but I love it. And I thought it went good with all of the linen. And my Miranda Fry bracelet, can't believe I put that on by myself. And I am not going to hold, you know, I'm not going to like drag this out any more than I have to. I'll make another video. I think the next video I'm going to make will be my Friday haul tomorrow. Then I will do the whole house thing about, you know, all the houses that we see on Instagram and YouTube because I had a lot of people ask about that too and that's something that I really, I feel like, I, I feel like I want to, of course I want to entertain you guys because that's what YouTube is for. It's either to teach or entertain. And of course I want to entertain you, but I'm not the kind of personality that's going to jump around and do skits and everything like that. So I really want to share things that I learn and things that I feel passionate about that I hope will enrich your life. And that is what I want to really start, you know, focusing on. So if you will, I was thinking, if you will, if you would share like some, either some of these videos like on your Facebook I would like to attract more women, you know, our age, and really focus a lot more on that than I probably ever have. Not that I don't think anything I say would apply to anybody, but I want to focus on that a lot. And don't worry, I will not be giving up fashion or makeup because that is just what I love. That's what I'm passionate about, and I have so much to say about that too. So anyway, stick with me, and I will be back real soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.